He says, Mitch Hardaway out for two weeks too. Tim Hardaway day to day. <laughs> man, Mitch, Mitch Richmond. Mitch Richmond, man. I, I mean, those two back in the day, man, growing up in Oakland, that was that was fun times for basketball. Them two, uh, Mullen, that was fun. That was that was that was the good old days. All right, so next up, we will have hip hop artists from Chi-Town, from Chicago, Regenerate coming on the show here any minute now. Uh, really looking forward to getting this guy on the show. He's got an EP out. It's called The Call. It's available on Noise Trade. I will put the link in the chat room. You can download this for free. But I would recommend that you leave some type of tip on there. Also, DJ King Royal coming up in the chat room. Appreciate you for coming through. Uh, but with some of these signings, the, the Dolphins adding Danny Amendola, Sam Bradford going to the Cardinals. Sam Bradford, why? I repeat, why does he continue to get jobs? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm confused that this guy who only has one knee, uh, he may not have any knees because he's so injured so frequently. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. It. All right. So we got our next guest up on the line. How's it going? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. So we got Regenerate on the show. Like I was saying, he's got a EP out called The Call. Go uh, find that on Noise Trade. I'll put the link in the chat room. Uh, how's it going today? Doing well, man. Doing well. How about yourself? Doing good. Doing good. All right. So right, right out the gate, I got to ask you, where did you get this this name from Regenerate? What, what's the story behind this this name here? Yeah, yeah. So I, I used when I started doing Christian Hip Hop, I went by the rap name Redeem because at the time I didn't have a rap name, and so I just picked something really quick and simple that was definitely Christian. Uh, so then, um, I guess that for I guess from the moment I started using that name Redeem, I was like, uh, I'm gonna change that eventually, but I just need something for now. Uh, so then, as I started just uh, you know studying theology, studying the scriptures, um, regeneration was just something at the time that I, that was really kind of tripping me out. Just how God regenerates our hearts, makes us brand new, and I kind of felt that's what the Lord did with regards to me and my music. Um, just I was rapping before I was a Christian, and then once I got saved, it just totally switched. The reason I was doing it, you know, the message, the content, all that. Um, so then I just was like, yeah, I've been regenerated. I've been born again. And so uh, specifically. You know, regenerate the the you know if that's that's past that that means I've been a recipient of regeneration, um, but I spell it the way I do because you know regenerate and regenerate are spelled the same way. Um, so just to let people know the way I pronounce it, I spell it how I do. But yeah, yeah, but it, it is it is definitely uh, something unique. You know, it's not no you, if you Google that, nothing else is going to come up by anybody else. So. I think that's I think that's also good that you have something that people will probably remember, and also the meaning behind it is is uh, so real and true. Yeah, amen, amen. Praise God. Yeah, definitely. All right, so how did you how did you get into hip hop? Once again, we're talking with Regenerate. He's got an EP out called The Call on Noise Trade. But how did you get into hip hop originally? Uh, you know, growing up, or you know, you met somebody, or yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, born and raised in Chicago, um, you know, a lot of good hip hop that's come out of Chicago. But for me specifically, uh, my I just grew up with a lot of music in the household. So my mom and dad played a lot of different kinds of music, um, you know, rock, you know, South Side, but ain't, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, so it's Spanish music, too. Okay. Um, and, you know, my dad played a lot of rap, old school stuff in the night, you know, 90s hip hop, 80s hip hop, you know. Um, so then for me, I guess as a kid, I always grew up being into being really into like. I used to love reading and writing all the time. That's something I did all the time. My teachers would tell, talk to my mom all the time about how good I was at that stuff. Um, and then when I, it wasn't until my sophomore year of high school that uh, I was watching like uh, BET uh, Rap City and they were talking about like the top 10 rap groups of all time. They had uh, Wu-Tang Clan on the list 
And I was like, yo, I know my dad has that stuff. So I just started listening to them. And that's just, I said, yo, I love hip hop. This is dope. Like, I need to start doing this. You know what I mean? Right, um, right. So it wasn't long after I really started listening to rap a lot that I was like, man, let me try writing my own stuff. And then it just went from there. I realized, man, it's a talent I've got, you know, by the grace of God. And uh, so I just started doing that. I was like, this is what I want to do for my life, with, uh, you know, for my life. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it definitely shows in the music. And, you know, I looked up your, your noise trade link and it's saying, yeah, Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang was one of the groups that you uh, grew up listening to and that you were a fan of. And the whole the whole Wu Tang, all of them have flow. All of them, Ghostface, yeah, Kendall, definitely. you can go Raekwon, you can go down the list. Their delivery, it, it was that 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 to me also kind of changed a stage in in hip hop where you had clicks of guys that could all flow. They all came out with their own music, um, and they were talented, multi talented. All of them was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, what, what were some of the other groups or artists that were influences for you at that, or or that are influences for you now? Yeah, so like, yeah, so I pretty much right. I got I got started basically with Wu Tang. Um, as a kid growing up, though, like when I was in when I was in about fourth grade, uh, Eminem dropped the Eminem show, and a kid in my a kid in my class at the time had that album, and he like borrowed that to me, and that kind of like changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> just like with how amazing like the lyricism was, I was like, "Yo, this is ne- I've never heard anything like this." So I, I, for a long time, I was just a fan of Eminem. You know, I really wasn't too into hip hop or rapping myself. I liked Eminem for a long time, um, and then once I got into like Wu Tang Clan, then I was like, "Man, this is like old school stuff." Though I wish there was newer MCs now who rap like this, this underground boom bap sound. Uh, and then again, this is back in the MySpace days, uh, but I, I. <laughs> I used that, and I ended up finding, like, all these other dope MCs. I got into Immortal Technique. I had heard one of his songs. Um, and then, again, this is also when LimeWire was popping, so I downloaded a lot of people's music illegally. Okay, but, Throwback. Throwback. Um, <laughs> so I got, so I got uh, yeah, so I got into Immortal Technique, Cannabis, Jedi Mind Tricks, um, Diabolic, just a bunch of super underground MCs. Um, and then, yeah, and then once I once I became a believer, like a lot of a lot of land mode influenced me heavily. So like Shylin, Timothy Brindle, Stephen the Levite, um, guys like that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm the first artist that I found, and I grew up listening to Cash Money, Tupac, uh, you name it. You know, the, I was a huge yeah. fan of it. But the first artist I found that kind of changed my mindset on rap was The Truth from Philly, and. Mm. When I heard his the big picture, it, it completely it. I mean, I was dumbfounded because I'm like, wow, these guys are Christians and they can flow. It's not it's not corny. It's not like I don't want to listen to it or it's something that I'm I'm not gonna put in put in my my CD player or whatever. It was something I listened to constantly. Then I found the Cray. Then I found uh, Propaganda. Then I just the the list now is is unlimited. And the range yeah, of these yeah, guys yeah. is unlimited too. Yep. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, uh, Le- Lecrae, Lecrae was the first like Christian rapper I heard. Like, like prior to prior to that, all I all the only Christian rap I had ever heard was like corny like remixes of secular songs. Right, right. So Lecrae was like the first dude I heard like making his own music. And once I got into him, then Trip Lee and everybody else started following, and you know. Yeah, and from there on, you know, the rest the rest is history. Um, and we have a very interactive chat room, so I may be shouting out some people. Or if anybody's got questions for Regenerate, you can put them in the chat room. Uh, so shout out to, to a Angry Black Man in the chat room. Also, uh, appreciate you for coming through. So what's what can the listener uh, get out of the call? You know, the project that I believe it came out last year. Uh, but what can the listener expect and kind of what was your motivation on that coming out? Yeah, I think uh, so. What I, for, what I answered the first question, what what the listening get out of, I think the call and, and God willing, the the products I, I plan to continue releasing in the future is just this unashamed gospel proclamation. Like just, you know, I think I think, and this is a whole other discussion to get into. But you know, there's 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 the shift, especially with like Lecrae's change to like not be as explicit in his music, 
And so there's kind of that debate now heavily in CHH, like, is this the way to do it? Be explicit? Should we kind of water it down to reach more people? Whatever. Uh, I'm definitely on the side of staying explicit. And so if you want gospel-centered hip-hop, if you want theology, if you want, you know, scriptures, all that kind of stuff, that's what's going to come out of my music. But I think by the grace of God, I do a pretty good job of remaining true to hip-hop as far as lyricism um, and, and, you know, just the, the fundamental, like, elements of rap. MC and multi-syllable, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's real MC, real hip hop, real lyricism mixed with bold uh, scriptural truth, uh, God's word, theology. Um, and as far as the inspiration for the project, um, I think I'm somebody who's really into like evangelism and apologetics and all that kind of stuff. And I see a lot of times in the church, and I've experienced myself where I'll, I'll talk to people about those things, and they just like really ain't for it, and they're like, "Oh, that's cool that you do that, what's up?" But they don't feel that need and they don't feel like they don't they don't feel like the Great Commission is like one of the most prior like one of the biggest priorities in their lives, you know what I mean? And right. so they're like, Yeah, evangelism is cool but they're just not really about it. And so what I wanted to do with the call was just, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, call believers to what Christ has already called them to, remind them of what the Great Commission that we're supposed to be on in this world, uh, until we see the Lord. Yeah. And I think that's it's important because we we don't know the hour, the day, or the time, but it is our responsibility to tell people about Christ. If they if they choose not to, if they ignore it, we have done our part. And we uh, I mean, and it's really hit me as of late. You know, with more people I'm knowing starting to to die, starting to pass away, and mm. it's a sad moment to know you don't know. If you don't, you don't know where they're going to go. You don't know where they are. You don't know where, what, if you didn't share it with them, you know, that it, there's some responsibility there. And I think we, right. as believers, we got to really look at that, really look in the mirror, really be honest with ourselves. Are we reaching out to those people? Are we being honest with ourselves? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So coming out with the call, I know you have... Um, more projects going to be coming out. This is a sports show, so I got to ask you: uh, What teams do you follow? I know you're in you're in Shaw Town, so I don't know if you're a Chicago fan all around, or, or what. What teams do you follow? Yeah, that's pretty much the extent <laughs> as far as my sports. Like, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge sports person, but I'm big on yeah. I mean, it's Chicago, everything. When it comes to baseball in Chicago, definitely Cubs over White Sox. Um, so the the win, the World Series win, the Cubs had. Uh, was a pretty big deal for me. My whole life as a as a Cubs fan, um, you know, you you got to deal with that. People laughing at you like, oh, they're never gonna win. They suck. <laughs> it's a terrible, you know. Right, uh, right. So being able to celebrate like a, that historic moment, being in the city when that happened, was amazing. But yeah, so Bulls, Bears, you know, Cubs, all that kind of stuff. Definitely, definitely. And what what is up next for you? You know, people that may be in Chicago that are listening, or do you have shows? You got events. Uh, you got anything coming up that uh, fans can be looking out for? Yeah, so um, nothing super sad. I'm actually <laughs> performing somewhere, <laughs> right? Uh, actually, in a, in a, you know, in the next hour, actually. So oh, really? after this interview, basically, I'm going. I'm doing a performance. But um, <laughs> the hope that. is, the hope, yeah, yeah, the hope is to uh, just really start connecting. I think so. I've been rapping for almost like nine years, uh, right. or about nine years now. Um, and this is my first project I've ever put out. And I think in the time that I haven't been, in the time that I haven't put out a project, but I've been in the scene, um, I've built a good amount of connections, specifically in Chicago. So I know a lot of, you know, youth pastors in different churches and people throwing block parties and church events and things. So I'm pretty sure, especially with the summer coming around, there's going to be a lot of opportunities like that around the city. Um, I think anyone who would want to know about that stuff can just follow me on my Instagram page because uh, I'll definitely be posting a lot of stuff on there. Uh, as far as projects go, I'm planning by the grace of God to release two more projects this this within this year. Um, so I already got like the I already got the title for my next joint. I got the track list for it. It's going to be another five song EP, um, and then hopefully before the end of the year, release another one. But as of right now, I'm just really trying to start pumping out content because I've been working. You know, like I said, I've been rapping for like nine years and have not released anything until very recently. Uh, so just I guess make it up for lost time. Try to put out as much content as I can. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, keep me in the loop. Whatever you're coming out with, let me know. I'd love to get you back on to talk about 
uh, the new music coming out and to talk about what's what's going on in your life, uh, you know, at that point in time. So once again, Regenerate, uh, appreciate you for coming on the show. You know, you got a you got a show of your own coming up 